Good morning. Welcome to Hopewell this morning on this beautiful Sunday morning. A beautiful day to worship the Lord together. Amen. We've had just a phenomenal uh, conference the last three days. I think there's been uh, transformations more than we know and can count. But I just thank the Lord for the last three days that we've had this conference here uh, with Wesley Campbell and with Katie Souza and John Perks. And uh, I just feel like they've made uh, an eternal deposit here. It was not just a passing thing, but I think there's just been a totally uh, an amazing deposit that's been that's been placed into our hearts and just a lot of things broken open, which I'm just delighted about. And we want to keep it going. Amen. We don't want to keep, we don't want to go back to the old. Amen. Right. You know, when, when the cloud uh, uh, moved in the wilderness or the, the, the cloud by day, the fire by night over Israel, when that cloud moved, you moved with it. Amen. And there was no going back. You know, there's nothing in the Bible that said, well, they followed the cloud for a while, but then they went back. But, you know, I think sometimes in our Christian world, we go back, and it's not time to go back. It's time to advance, Amen. and God has given us that. So um, how many are here this morning to worship the Lord together? Amen? All right, good. Would you stand with me, and let's just uh, be ready to lift up our hearts. The worship team has just been phenomenal. They've been outstanding and blessed. Wow. 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 And so... Uh, we just feel like new things are happening there. So, you know, sometimes today, sometimes, uh, you know, when we're in here, maybe on Sunday morning, we might be thinking about as we go into worship personally, uh, somebody's to the right of me or somebody's to the left of me. And, uh, you know, sometimes that can inhibit us a little bit. But I want you to do something new today. I want you to say to the person to the left and to the right, I don't know about you, but I'm going to worship today. There, so you're all free individually now to worship the Lord. We're not having anything held back. And let's just let the Lord be glorified here in our midst. Amen? Amen. So, Jesus, we thank you this morning, God, for what you're doing in our midst. Thank you, Lord, for every life and heart that has been touched. And, God, we look forward now to this day, Lord, that this is a new day. God, it's a new day ready for new miracles, Lord. It's a new day ready for a new touch from you, O oh God. And that, Lord, it's not only about a touch, but that what we receive, we also are ready to take out. Lord, that we would take out into the community, we would take out into our homes, that we would take out into our family. And, Lord, that they would hear of the mighty things that God has done in our midst, Lord. And so, Lord Jesus, be glorified this morning as we come to just lift you up and to worship you now. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Amen. Let's worship together. If you guys want to step out of your seats and come up front, you please, please come. Be free um, to move around. Come forward. There's all this space in the front that and, gives you room to worship. And I agree with that also. So, <laughs> amen. And if there's not enough room in the front because you've all come forward, there's room on the sides and in the back. And I will sing of 
until the end you are faithful faithful to the end you are faithful you are faithful to the end
triumphs over judgment. Oh, you do, God, you triumph over judgment. You triumph over the grave. You triumph over Storm right in the dark, and the smiles can't conceal you. There's still room in front. Every glimmer is a spark, catching fire as you break through. You're not far away. 
Stay in that place. Stay in that place of worship right now. Just stay in that wonderful place of worship, of intimacy. Lord, fill with more today, Lord. Fill more with your love, O oh God. Fill more with your fire, Lord the fire of your Holy Spirit, Lord. Lord, in our soul, fill us, Lord, cleansing our soul, Lord, cleansing our souls, O oh God, that we would be transformed, Lord, here today, God. For you are near at hand. You're here in our midst. You're right here with us, Lord. Your angels, your angels are right here in our midst here this day, O oh God. We honor you that this is your house, Lord. This is your house, Jesus. We are your people, Lord. We are the sheep of your pasture, O oh God. 
And you are the great shepherd, Lord. You are the great and wonderful shepherd, Lord. You're willing to leave the 99 to go and to rescue the one, oh God. And Lord, each one of us, each one of us was rescued, oh God. Each of us, Lord, was rescued by your love, by your mercy, by your pursuing us, Lord, even when we weren't pursuing you, oh God, and you pursued us, Lord. And so Jesus, we come, Lord, this morning to just love upon you today, to love upon you, to worship you, Lord. And we thank you that you are loving upon us here this day, Lord, that you are singing over us, your word says. So, Lord, let that communion just continue here this day, Lord. The communion between each one of us and you and you and each one of us, Lord. That we would continue to walk in the Spirit, to walk in the Holy Spirit, Lord, as your word has given to us and directed us. Yes, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Say more with me. Let's just say more. Let's say more. Let's say more. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Watch out. He's giving you more right now. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Lord, thank you for your cleansing power here right now, too. We love you. Bless you this day, Lord. Just continue to minister in our midst now as we minister to you. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Amen. Can you just give, amen? Give the Lord a shout. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory, 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 glory. We turn and greet two or three people and bless them today in the name of Jesus. Just give them a great big blessing today. down there or here, or just pull us aside. Amen. Hallelujah. Then we have a phenomenal worship team here. Can we give it up for the team? Bless them. Thank you, thank you, thank you. And it's awesome to have Angela and Adam here with us for this conference. And they've been a part. Yeah, give a hand there. She's been one of Hopewell's young people that uh, went out on the mission field. You were out there uh, for a year in England with her husband immediately after they were married. They didn't even get the one year, right? They were thrown into the fire right away. And obviously they made it through well, so we bless you, amen. Um, we just have had a phenomenal three days here uh, in the conference, and if you, amen. <laughs> How many got a blessing or a healing or in any way? Just put your hands up. Yeah, praise the Lord. So those of you that didn't, you need to get with one of those that just raised their hand and say, what happened? Tell me about it, okay? Because you missed something. Because there was incredible things that God was doing here. Uh, I also want to take a moment again and just say a great big thank you to all of the team members, all of the church members that helped make this thing possible. 
So um, in addition to the worship team, I want to say thank you to the hospitality team. Is Glenn and Mim here and Cindy? And are they here? Anyway, let's give a thanks for those, for all the meals, everything that was being done. For the parking team, those that were helping park cars, can we give it up for them? Thank them for that. For the ushers, the greeters, amen. And for uh, just everybody, the teams that just helped in so many, many ways. There's just no way we can do anything like this without your, yeah, security team. Let's give it up for the security team, amen. Thank you guys, amen. And uh, there's no way we can do something. But the neat thing is, is with you, we can do these things. And with Jesus, we can do all things. And so I believe God is just stretching our, our vision higher. Amen. He's just drawing us higher. And he's going, yeah, you can do that too. Yeah, you can do that too. And so, you know, with God, where he gives us the vision, he gives also the provision for it. And so we thank the Lord for that, for the phenomenal things that uh, have just been happening this weekend. Uh, it's been such a tremendous, tremendous honor for us to, to have uh, Wesley Campbell and your team here this weekend. Give him a big, big blessing. Just awesome things just been happening. Just awesome things. And he's going to be speaking this morning and sharing this morning. So I um, just want to say thank you again to everybody that helped pull this off. And, and just God is glorified. That's all I can say. He's been glorified through this last several days. Uh, in your open up your bulletin in the meantime, and you can go ahead and take out your connection card, please, uh, for everybody that's here, our regular, and also those that are visiting, and go ahead and fill that in, and you can fill in the front side with your information, and then on the reverse side, uh, any prayer requests, praise report, uh, especially any testimony, uh, include any testimonies that uh, God did in your life. We want to be able to hear those. We want to be able to share and encourage one another with that. And so uh, go ahead and do that. Um, I want to take a moment to ask Janet to come up. Uh, Janet Juan has been this sweet, sweet woman here of God and an anointed prophetic artist. And she has done these two, that one during the conference and this one here during the conference. And I, you know, I just am amazed at how you can stay focused. You know, I can't chew gum and walk at the same time. So how with worship team is going on and, you know, you played, a, you know, painted this. But would you want to share a little bit about this one here and tell us also just a little bit about yourself, too. Hi, everyone. My name is Janet Hyun, and I'm a prophetic artist. And I'm traveling to share the gospel through my paintings. <laughs> This painting is about, um, I was thinking about the you know, title. <laughs> title, I was thinking about the title of this painting. Welcome home. <laughs> so I, I painted two paintings during this conference. One is the, you know, the Lion of Judah, the King of King. The second one is the, um, I really inspired by yours, your congregation and church and the peoples. I felt cozy and love and something flow, the blessing flow you know, in this you know, place. So that's about this painting. <laughs> so this painting, it's about the nest of hope. This place is training disciples and feeding people and raising children and teaching and, of course, learning to spread the gospel to the world. Yeah. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. Uh, part of um, the blessing that, that comes back to Janet is that uh, the Lord also helps her to bring in the finances for her to uh, carry out her ministry and, you know, to do what she is doing and travel and so forth. So uh, since she said this one was inspired here uh, by Hopewell and by the people here, and it, it's beautiful because it, it reflects the eggs there in the nest and the nurturing and you know, and actually there's a, a branch of an olive branch right here in the beak of this bird here. 
and there's a lot of other things she could tell you, but I feel like I would like for us to obtain this for the church here. And so if you would like to help with that, uh, please see me so that we can talk about it, and we would like to buy that uh, and be able to have it here in the church because it really is amazing how it was inspired really by, by you and by the presence of the Lord here working through you. Amen? Amen. Good. A couple of things uh, to mention. The, there's um, a men's retreat that is coming up, and we just need to mention that because it's, uh, needs, you need to register for that men. Uh, also, I'll make the announcement to the women. Women, uh, there's a men's retreat coming up. If you would want to sponsor your husband or your man, please go ahead and do that. You might do it sooner than he does. Uh, it's October 27th, 28th, and 29th. Uh, Pastor Joel's been working on this along with uh, Todd, and it's going to be up in a place called The Loft, but you go ahead. Sure. Say about this. Um, first of all, guys, this is the first time we've gone away on a retreat in like, what, six, seven years. It's been a while. But a lot of guys have been asking for this. Can We're the going. Men, can the men handle that? Do you think being away from home? Dude, we can handle anything, right? <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> anyway, um, it's at a place called the Loft, which is like a little more than two hours from here, like straight north, just before you get to the New York border. It's overlooking the endless mountains. It's absolutely gorgeous. There's all kinds of things we can do. Ladies, close your ears for a moment. Guys, we can take our guns. <laughs> All right, and um, our speaker is going to be Pastor Bill Beck from, from Spring City. Uh, this guy is just amazing, awesome testimony, awesome what the Lord's doing through him, and Pastor Kirk can attest to that. His, his topic, it's a new book he has coming out. It's from his testimony. It's just simply, I needed more. Hallelujah. And if that's the cry of your heart, if you're saying, man, I, I you know, I love the Christian life, I, I, I you know, I've learned a lot, I've experienced a lot, but I need more. Mm -hmm. I need more. Come on this retreat. Come on this retreat. You're going to find more. Now, before that, next Sunday, we have the Eagles versus the Giants. All right? Eagles fans, you're welcome to attend. Giants fans, we will practice our sanctification. Um, this, is, this is a prayer meeting for these teams here, so we want you to know, you know. But, but you're all welcome uh, next Sunday afternoon over in the meeting place. By the way, bring a guy to this event, and we'll try to get him to this event. How about that? All right? Amen. <laughs> Thank you, Pastor Joel. Doing phenomenal things. Thank you, Lord. And uh, next, um, next Sunday, which is the 24th, um, we would like to have a worship night. Um, we're, uh, I'm going to say, tentatively planning for that because we are wanting to have uh, Jack Bittner lead that. And he is, amen. <laughs> and uh, he, has, he has just uh, gone through kind of a small operation to take out uh, a couple of screws, or maybe it's more than a couple, and a plate, and he needs that full healing there. So maybe we'll put it this way. If you pray for him to be fully healed this week, then next Sunday night we can have this worship time. And so we'll continue to just let you know about that, but love to see uh, Jack be able to lead that. Praise the Lord. All right. Well, if the ushers would come forward to receive your blessings, your gifts to the Lord, that's what we get to bring to him and be able to offer to him uh, this day. And so let's go ahead and just do that. Let's offer it to the Lord. You can put also your connection cards uh, in at this time. Yeah, I just continue to feel this, this flow from the conference is just continuing here, just filling the place up. Last night, those of you that were here, um, there was a little bit of an interesting development, but there was a fella that was needing some deliverance. And um, by the time, yeah, anyway, he got set free. Um, as, some, some heavy duty, heavy duty things having to do with stuff. <laughs> I'll just put it that way. 
Uh, and I want to thank the Lord for a couple of great sisters that were alongside of me. Uh, Hannah Hunter was alongside. And where is Esther at? Esther, I had one nurse on one side of me, one nurse on the other side of me, and I was the bull in the china shop, okay? But the enemy is not going to get away with that stuff. And so uh, he was set free, and uh, it was beautiful, actually, to see if you didn't stay late enough. See, you got to watch what God does. It's usually after midnight, you know? The faint-hearted go home first, but God moves later on. No, it just was beautiful. My heart is to see people set free. That's, that's one of the things it's all about. So let's pray and just lift up our, worship, our, our offering today. And then we're looking forward to hear uh, Brother Wesley Campbell come as he shares from his perspective just around the world and the ministry that God's given him. So, Father, we do humble ourselves before you this day. And, Lord, we thank you that we can sow into your kingdom, sow into your hands, O oh God, and to see your kingdom advance, God, by the things of obedience and the things of love. Lord, it's not that we give out of some rule. It's not that we give because we have to. It's because we give because we are allowed to. That, God, we, are, we, are, we have the opportunity to give. It's part of the love relationship, Lord, that we have with you. Yeah, thank you, Lord. And so, Lord, as each one gives today, I pray that you would pour back even your sweet presence, confirming things, affirming things, and blessing each one, Jesus. And so, Father, we give you all this today, and we say thank you, Lord, for it. Thank you all that you do in our lives, Lord. And we give you thanks in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. You may receive that. <clears throat> All right. Brother Wesley, and you're ready to come up. Let's give him a warm hope. Well, welcome as he's coming. Maybe the next time your beloved could come Absolutely. with you. Amen. <laughs> I love you. Appreciate Thank you. you. God bless you, Pastor Kurt. And Pastor Anita, wow. What a wonderful place. Uh, everyone commented on, you know, there's something about this place. There's something about you as a people. And uh, what um, Janet did with that painting, she said, I said, Janet, I've never seen you do birds before. And she said, she said, it's like a cozy nest, a cozy nest. And I was, I was, I even woke up this morning thinking, I wonder what it'd be like to grow up in a church like this, a teenager, <clears throat> uh, when I was young, we never had anything like this. And uh, I guess that's why it took me a while to get saved. But anyway, greetings. Now, how many of you were here um, for the conference? Let me see your hand. Okay, let, uh, let me see those that weren't here for the conference. Okay, just a couple of you. Some of you don't want to vote, I can tell. You're abstainers. So uh, it's good to see you. Those of you who weren't here, we greet you in the name of the Lord. My name is Wesley. I come from the west coast of Canada, and we're also in California at the Santa Maria House of Prayer. My wife Stacy is a shaking, prophesying, uh, ecstatic visionary. And uh, you can read about her, actually, in this book called um, uh, Ecstatic Prophecy. This is a phenomenal book. I want to recommend this. If any of you have had supernatural situations that happen to you that you don't understand, this is a theological treatise for you. You want to get that? And uh, that'll be really good for you. Um, <clears throat> also, I have a couple uh, CDs. Um, you know, CDs have gone out of... I grew up when there was eight tracks, okay? And before that, we had records, right? Okay, so now it's USBs. So we put everything onto the USB, then you put it on your computer, then you put it on your iPhone, and you go to the treadmill, you go in traffic, and uh, it sanctifies you. So we have 20 some prayer CDs with music put to the prayers and singers behind the music. And uh, really, it's the precursor to the harp and bowl that Mike Bickle has popularized. Uh, we did this some years ago. And I'm going to play one track for you from uh, my daughter. And she actually, you can pray for her. She got married last Saturday to an American. And she went to go across the border with him yesterday. 
or the day before, and she got stopped at the border. Uh, they said, you need a different visa. You can't come in with that visa. You need a different visa. So they said it'll be three to 12 months. And he's working down. So, so we're going to just pray. As you hear her pray, you're going to pray and say, God, release, release her to the border. <clears throat> so uh, we're going we're gonna to believe for um, release. Amen? So this is the Lord's Prayer. And we've got like, on this one, there's a children's, uh, one of the CDs has got about 18 children's prayers. And I would say there's... Uh, I would say there's 200 tracks of prayers, okay, that you can get on those, and so you'll check those out. Okay, uh, Pastor Joel, is it is it going to work? That's it. Real loud, uh, Jonas. My name is Vashti Allen Campbell. The Lord's Prayer. I love the Lord's Prayer. prayer. Our Father, who is in heaven, holy is your name. Let your kingdom come. Let your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give me today my daily food. And forgive me Amen. Praise God. Go ahead and give the Lord a clap for that. <clears throat> out of the mouth of babes. Out of the mouth of babes. Well, I was looking forward to this morning because I want to share a message that I, I really believe is something that is for this congregation. <clears throat> and um, as well, I myself have pastored in the same church for 30 some years. Uh, we've moved to a different location now, but um, when you live in a place long enough, or when you live long enough, you're going to face many things. <clears throat> Stacy, my wife, says, when I see a young man with zeal, I am encouraged. When I see an old man with zeal, I stand amazed. <clears throat> I mean, when we're young, uh, we can run through a troop, leap over a wall, come on, bring on the fires. I'll, I'll go anywhere. I'll do anything, Jesus. And then when we're old, it's kind of like Bob Dylan's song. I'm just trying to get to heaven before they close the door. And you know, you just hardly, you're just hanging on <coughs> because life has many knocks. So I'm calling this the power of blessing in your life. Lessons from Abraham. And for those of you who did not, um, were not here yesterday, or the, yeah, it was yesterday, we have a, 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 a opening message to this on the power of blessing, which is a g great uh, uh, foundation. <clears throat> but I want to go farther into how this works in your life. So show, uh, let's go to Genesis 12, 1. <clears throat> this is where Abram pretty much starts. And it starts awesome. How many of you know when you get saved... It's awesome. When God first meets you and he tells you he loves you and everything's great and it's going to be great. And it even says it here, <clears throat> Abram, leave your country, your people, your father's household. Go to the land I'm going to show you. Go and I will show. Leave and cleave. <clears throat> I'm going to make you into a great nation. I will bless you. I'm going to make your name great. You will be a blessing. I will bless those who bless you. Whoever curses you, I will curse. All the peoples on the earth are going to be blessed through you. And verse 7, the Lord appeared to Abraham and said, To your children, your offspring, the fruit that comes from you, I'm going to give this land. How many of you know this is the most grandiose 
grandiose statement and promise that anyone in the world has ever received. <clears throat> I don't believe you could find historical accounts of kings, pharaohs, world monarchs who said their God gave them a promise like this. This is way over the top. Abram, leave, come. I'm going to make you great. You're going to be awesome. Everywhere you go, every boat in the harbor is going to float. No one, everywhere you go, you're going to bring blessing to the whole wide world. All the peoples in the whole earth are going to be blessed. Why? Because I'm going to bless you. Whoever comes against you, they deal with me. And not only that, see this land I brought you to? All those people that think they ha that, that house that they're living in is theirs? No, no, no. It's going to be yours. This is so over the top that I think it would take a lot of faith to actually believe it. <clears throat> but because God appeared to him, appeared to him like he appeared to Moses, Abram believed it. Now, this is the premier blessing passage. <clears throat> now, I just have to mention this. Um, what does blessing mean? Go ahead to Barbara. By the way, Barbara's awesome back there. She's just like, she's the rock. Nothing gets past Barbara. <clears throat> so um, the word blessing is a very interesting word. It doesn't mean as minimal as, you know, like somebody sneezes and you say, you know, God bless you. It's way beyond that. The word blessing, go ahead one more, means to endue with power for success. That's what it means. The word blessing means God wants to endue, to infuse you with power to succeed. That's the dictionary definition. Theological dictionary of the Old Testament. <clears throat> it means prosperity. That's a great word. We're scared of that word. But that's what this word means. Prosperity. It means fecundity. I said yesterday. That's a word you have to be careful saying in church. Fecundity. Say fecundity. Say it again. Fecundity. What does that mean? It means fruitful. It means bountiful. It means things will grow. You'll have children. <clears throat> it's an awesome word. So you've just learned something in church and you didn't, you know, that's a freebie. That's a, a hors d'oeuvre. It means longevity. <clears throat> now, as I'm going to say about Abram, <clears throat> I, I have to bring this little piece in, which I mentioned yesterday, and then everything else is going to be new. But um, most people, when they actually comprehend the concept of blessing, it is so great it is so over the top that they move into unbelief. They can't believe that God is going to do this for them. What do I mean by that? They can't believe that God would treat you like he treats Abraham. That the promises that God would give Abraham are promises that you can actually appropriate into your life. That the promises given to Abram, Isaac, Jacob, Joseph, you actually can have that power working in your life. That the promises of the Deuteronomy 28, all those incredible promises, that you actually can take those. They are so great and so over the top that theologically people just dismiss it and say, well, that's to Abraham, that's to Jacob, that's to Joseph, that's to Israel, that's to this. And I say no. I say no. I say you get every single one of them. And the proof is Galatians 3, uh, Galatians 3, 7. <clears throat> Show me that one. And I mentioned this yesterday, so I'm not going to take long. But it says, understand that those who believe, if you believe in Jesus Christ, God, through Jesus Christ, you have become children of Abraham. Okay, you're in the family. He says, you're grafted into the family of Israel. <clears throat> the scripture foresaw that God would justify, make right... The non-Jews, okay, that's you and me that are, if you're not a Jew, you are a Gentile. Okay, so you're, you're not a Jew. I, my forefathers, I'm a Campbell. So that means my forefathers had red, blue paint and they ran around in dresses and looked like banshees in the mountains of Scotland <clears throat> and scared the bejeebies out of the Romans, right? Okay, so these Celts, Barbarians, 
would become children of Abram and by, uh, by faith. And, and God announced the gospel, the good news, in advance to Abraham. The good news to Abraham was this. I'm going to bless you. I love you. You're going to be great. You're going to be awesome. Everywhere you go, everybody is going to be attracted to you, and you're going to make every single boat in the world float. The whole wide world is going to be impacted by you. Whoever comes against you, I'm against them. Whoever comes for you, I'm for them. That was the good news he heard. That's the good news. That is good news. If there really is a God and he's on your side, that's awesome. Okay? <clears throat> All the nations will be blessed. So those who have faith are blessed along with Abram, the man of faith. If you have faith, you get blessed along with Abram. Click, go, show me the next one. Now watch this, verse 14, right there. He redeemed us in order that, purpose clause. He redeemed us that the blessing given to Abraham would go to Gentiles. Lock into this. The blessing given to Abraham is going to come to non-Jews 2,000 years after Abraham. 4,000 years after Abraham. The blessing is working, and it goes to everyone who comes to God through Jesus. Jesus takes the curse. Jesus reconciles us to God so God is free to entirely bless you. Come on. He's going to bless you. He's going to bless you. Every situation you're in, he is working to turn it for good for you. <clears throat> My daughter is at the border. She's sent home. They're going to be estranged. I phoned her this morning or last night. I can't remember. I said, it's going to be okay. God is going to bless you. God is going to be working on your behalf. Something's coming. Something good is coming. <clears throat> if you belong to Christ, you're Abram's seed, and you have an inheritance right there. You're in, uh, so what you want to do is you want to read Genesis 50 times, once a week for a whole year, because there's 50 chapters, and you circle everything that happened good in the face of difficulty, and then you say, that's my blessing. I get that. You pray all those. You pray all those. The blessings 450 times in the Bible minimum. 88 times in Genesis. Genesis is beginnings. Okay, this is, now we move on. <coughs> that was a review. <clears throat> we have 23 minutes. And we're going to just really do this. Okay, <clears throat> Genesis 12.4. 12, 12.4 4. 12, 4 comes right after the promise. Okay, Genesis 12.4, Barbara. Immediate troubles. <clears throat> So famine went, or Abram went, as the Lord told him, and Lot went with him. Abram was 75 years old when he set out from Haran. He took his wife Sarah, his nephew Lot, all the possessions they had accumulated. Notice the phrase, and the people they had acquired in Haran. Did you ever see that before? And the people. And the people they acquired in Haran. In chapter 14, it's going to show you some of the people. 318 trained servants born in his household. Chapter 14 is about only a little time into this story. Chapter 15, it's 10 years in. The point is this. <clears throat> 308 trained, trained men would have wives. They would have children. There'd be some old guys he set out with a church of a thousand. The man, the man went for a walk, a walkabout with a church of a thousand. He just kind of circled the wagon and says, all right, guys, God has appeared to me. He says, I'm great. He says, I'm going to be greater. He says, go and I will show. He says, the people in Telford, Pennsylvania, are going to get up from bed 4,000 years from now because you and I are going on an adventure. Come 
wrong. <clears throat> they said, where are we going? He said, I don't know. I'll tell you when we get there. Now, that's the way he started his church. <clears throat> How would you like to be his wife? So they set out for the land of Canaan. They arrived there, verse 6. Abram traveled to the land as far as the great tree of Moriah. Go to the next verse. <clears throat> Watch this. Watch this now. And the Lord appeared to him again. That's two appearings. Said, I'm going to give you this land, blah, 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 blah. Verse 8. <clears throat> From there he pitched a tent, etc. Verse 9. <clears throat> they set out toward the Negev. Verse 9 again. Verse 9 and 10. <clears throat> now Abram set out to the Negev, and there was famine in the land. <clears throat> Hello, guys, we got two appearances, two promises, and the first thing we face is famine in the land. I can just imagine the pillow talk with Sarai. <laughs> Look, Abe, Abe, are you sure you saw him? <clears throat> I have dragged our family, not our family because we don't even have one, but everybody else's family, 700 miles, <clears throat> a thousand of us, and the first thing that happens is economic famine. That doesn't look like blessing. And I'm going to say this, and I could say it almost every point. When you're going through hell, don't stop. Don't stop. You see, if you measure his life, he's called the father of faith. If you measure his life on almost every chapter, it's like, oh, no, it's just, it's just terrible. But then, like, the next chapter, it's good again. So you never stop in the valley, ever. Every bad thing that happens to you, that is not how you are defined. You are defined of how you're going to come through that valley to the next mountaintop. Come on. <clears throat> Joseph shows us that. So <clears throat> they get there. <coughs> the very first thing they have to do is go where? They, they get to their promised land, and they have to leave their promised land. First thing, they don't even camp. And where do they go? Egypt, <clears throat> because the famine was severe. Now, verse 11, <clears throat> Egypt is a mighty empire. They existed, you know, before Abram went there. <coughs> they talk a different language. They're sophisticated, et cetera, et cetera. And evidently, a Abraham and Sarah had some more pillow talk. Now, Abe says, when the Egyptians see you, they will say, this is his wife. So then they're going to kill me and let you live. Here's what we'll do. You say you're my sister. Good plan. <clears throat> and then I will be treated well for your sake and my life will be spared because of you. Underlying assumption, they're going to take you into his harem. Sarah, like just... Go with the plan. <clears throat> so when Abram came to Egypt, the Egyptians saw that Sarah was very beautiful. And when Pharaoh's officer saw her, they praised her to Pharaoh. And she was taken into his palace. And she was taken there to become part of his harem. Yikes. <clears throat> now, I want to just mention, this is after two encounters. I think, you, I think we're all too hard on ourselves. This is the father of the faithful. The Bible says in Romans, a Abram trusted God, nothing wavering. I'd call this some serious wavering. <laughs> we got some serious wavering going on here. But nevertheless, <clears throat> that's where, okay, appearance, adventure, thousand guys, Egypt, or Canaan, Famine, Egypt. Now my wife's in the concubine, concubinage. I made that word up, but it sounds good. <clears throat> now, God, 
Here comes the blessing. The blessing is now working. Here it goes. <clears throat> we can mess it up. The blessing still works. We can have bad circumstances. The blessing still works. Here's what happens. So suddenly, Pharaoh begins to, verse 16, treat Abram well because of her sake. And Abram acquires sheep, cattle, male, female donkeys, male, female servants, camels. And he gets everything because he's favored because Pharaoh has his hot wife. But in Pharaoh's household, God is at work. Now, serious affliction. See what the Bible says? He inflicted serious disease. Say serious disease. This isn't even just disease. This isn't just affliction. It's serious disease is inflicted on the, on the Egyptians because Abraham's wife, Sarah. Now, I don't know which this one is, but you know, he's going to pull this stunt again in a couple more chapters. We won't get to it, but he'll do it again with Abimelech. Abimelech's bunch, <clears throat> Abimelech will be, all the guys get hemorrhoids. They're always getting hemorrhoids. The Philistines got hemorrhoids when they, got, when they caught God's box. Everybody gets hemorrhoids. All the women can't have children. And <laughs> news goes out, you know, like they say, ever since those Hebrews got here, like something's going wrong in the atmosphere. So they get all the guys together and they start inquiring and, and by the way, in Abimelech's dream, God comes in his dream. In his dream, God comes in his dream and says, you are a dead man. In his dream, God, you're a dead man. This is the king. <coughs> the king goes, why am I a dead man? In his dream. In his dream, God says, because you have taken my prophet's uh, wife into your concubinage. And, and Abimelech goes, I didn't know. He said he was your sis he was his sister. And in the dream, God says, that's why I haven't killed you already. And that's why you didn't touch her or I would have killed you. <clears throat> he says, let him go or I'll kill you. <clears throat> ah! the guy, now that is a nightmare. <laughs> now listen, you have a bad boss. Hello, you have a bad boss. You got somebody bugging you? God, give him a dream. Give him a dream. You have the authority to pray nightmares on your boss. <clears throat> I'm telling you. On your enemies. Uh, Laban, Laban steals all of Jacob's stuff. God says, don't touch him. Don't even say a word. Listen, dreams are all through Genesis. You have to say, God, visit him with dreams. So Pharaoh's got all this, you know, who knows? Boils are coming out. The guy's got hemorrhoids. No one can have children. Everyone's talking. You know they're talking. And somebody says, since those Hebrews came here, it hasn't been going so good around town. Someone says, yeah, what about those Hebrews? Yeah, well, he took one of them into his, into his, into his harem. <clears throat> and no doubt someone talked to her, and she probably said, well, they said, you know, uh, hey, Sarah, where are you from? Heron. So uh, that brother of yours, what about him? Well, you know, if the truth be told, he's actually more than my brother. We are kind of related, but we're actually married. And news gets up the way to Pharaoh. <clears throat> Pharaoh summons Abram, says, what have you done? Like, why did you tell me? And of course, <coughs> uh, Abram says, show me uh, the next one. Uh, what he says is this, I thought you'd kill me. And Pharaoh, though, summons him and knows that there's power in his life. He says, now listen, here's your wife back. Take it and go. Take it and go. So now he gets all of Egypt's stuff. Camels, cows, goats, horses, cattle. His wife doesn't get violated. The, Pharaoh, the famine's over. And he goes back to Canaan loaded with stuff. Come on, give the Lord a hand for that. <clears throat> The point is, you can't measure blessing by an immediate trouble. You have to go beyond the trouble to see how God is going to work it through. And this thing can take years. Keep going. This is awesome. Uh, more troubles. So they had the, uh, chapter 13. So they get back. Now they got so much blessing that the land can't contain them. Do you know that you can have so much blessing you can fight about it? 
Look at America. Look at Canada. We have so much. Do you know how many troubles come to families because of inheritance de de separation? So uh, the worship team start fighting. Lot's herdsmen, Abram's herdsmen, they're all fighting. <clears throat> Abram says, okay, stop, 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 stop. God is so good to us. We have so much that our blessing is choking us out. Let's just, you take one side, I'll take the other side. You want the left, I'll take the right. You want the right, I'll take the left. Of course, Lot chooses the best one. This isn't like, I cut, you choose. No, this is like, you get it all. <clears throat> and Lot goes off, and God says, uh, uh, that happens in verse 8. But verse 14, Genesis 13, 14, God appears again and says, he took the best, no matter. I'm still going to bless you. Everywhere your, your side goes, I'm going to bless that. You can get the worst side of the deal and still come out on top. That's called blessing. The blessing is working. The blessing is working. Okay, chapter 14, and I'm, gonna, I'm, I'm really going to go fast. All we're going to do, Barbara, on this one is you're just going to keep pushing buttons while I keep talking. <clears throat> All you need to know about this is there's civil war in the region he goes to. It has nothing to do with him. Four ki f five kings rebel against four kings. The four kings get ticked off. They're going to come and smash the five kings. And notice, please, in the second, next slide, on their way to smash the five kings, they, they have this many fights. Show me the next one. Uh, no, no, sorry, sorry, that was it. That was the one. See all these guys? The four, the fo the four kings beat all these people. All of them. Raphazites, Zuzites, Ammonites, Horzites, Amalekites, Amorites, Wood Ticks, everybody, everybody gets beat. <clears throat> okay? Now you can imagine how strong these four kings' armies are. I mean, they're going to fight all these guys. Now they get down to Canaan and they're going to fight <clears throat> uh, Sodom, Gomorrah kings, etc. That's 14 verse 8. And they have a big fight, and Sodom and Gomorrah guys lose. Which means, uh, uh, 1411, they sack the place and take away Lot. Okay, so now these, these non-God-fearers have touched the Lord's anointed family. Okay, they took Lot. <clears throat> and you saw how many people they beat. So what does Abram do? He has to fight. Do you know that you're going to have fights? A lot of Christians don't want to fight. A lot of Christians do not want to fight. You have to fight. Go to the next one, please, Barbara. Sometimes you have to stand up and fight. You have to fight for your... You, I, <clears throat> we went into a building. The city wanted to change the bylaws. They didn't want to lose the tax base. It's a $10 million building. So they perverted justice to stop us from getting in. They stopped us for four years. Finally, the building came open, and I said, let's go in. We're gonna, we, we actually went into the building in the dead of night. In the night, we went in illegally. <laughs> Illegal, why? Because they said it didn't fit the code. But we went in, and, we, and, and basically we said, we're here. We're not leaving. God said it. This is the, our place. And from inside the building, and it was only then that the whole city council crumbled and said, you know what? Someone said, why aren't we blessing these guys? These guys are good guys. They help so many people. They're doing all this good. What are we doing anyhow? And they totally change in the city council. Sometimes you have to fight. You have to fight. Abram got up, took 318 men. Now, guys, what good is 318 men? We're talking four kings that beat all these tribes and lands. 418 men. I listened to Oral Roberts preach on this. It was phenomenal. It's one of his last sermons of his life. And he preached on blessing. And he says, he's starting to go to the rabbis. He goes, Rabbi? He says, what can you tell me about this chapter? And he says, Rabbi said this. He says, this is God's principle. The few will overcome the many. The many will not overcome the few. Come on. The few will overcome the many. 
The many will not overcome the few. <clears throat> 318 guys. They chase them 100, 200 miles. Does this look like blessing? Famine, fighting, Pharaoh, wars. He chases them. Go ahead to the next one. He pursued them as far as Dan. During the night, Abram divided his men in the attack. He routed them. He recovered all his goods. Brought back his relative lot, his possessions, etc., etc., And he won the battle. Come on, give a clap for God. <clears throat> and the Lord said this, I am your shield. Listen, do you have a fight going on? God's your shield. Do you have a fight? God's your shield. God is the one who's going to fight for you. You have an inheritance. You have a, some business deal. You have something going on. Uh, God is your shield. That's what blessing looks like. Show me the next one, Barbara. And uh, <clears throat> so he returned. And on his way, he meets this mysterious dude called Melchizedek. You know, Hebrews says he comes out of nowhere. And no one knows where he came from. No one knows where he's going. He's this mysterious prince of Salem. A prophet of the Most High God. He's a type of Christ. <clears throat> so he, Abram's coming back with all the booty. He's got like, like, who knows? He's probably got a caravan of hundreds of camels tied together with their nose because they took all the stuff from the kings. And he's coming back. He's got all this stuff. And God talks to the two of them. And, and maybe, maybe Abram knew this guy. We don't know everything. So God says to Melchizedek, go out and bless Abram. He's coming home from a battle. I made him victorious. Go and bless him. And Melchizedek says, blessed be God, Abram of God most high, possessor of heaven and earth. Listen to me. God possesses the heaven and earth. Every blade of grass is his. Every piece of land is his. Every country is his. He possesses heaven and earth. Come on. That's why this stuff works. Because he owns it. He possesses heaven and earth. Blessed be God most high. Who has delivered your enemies? You have enemies. I have tons of enemies. You can't accomplish anything without having enemies. As soon as you want to do something, someone else wants to do it a different way. If you do nothing, you have no enemies. If you do anything, you'll have enemies. Because as soon as you push... Someone else has a different idea and a different philosophy and a different agenda, and they're going to push back. But God will deliver you from your enemies. I'm doing a whole study. I'm doing a study, I, I told you yesterday, 31 blessings, one for every day. One of them is this principle here. God deliver the blessing of being delivered from your enemies. I'm doing a study on every single battle in the whole Bible. Every single battle, the whole Bible, I've got them all articulated, how many times we're outnumbered and we always win? Come on. As soon as we're walking in the blessing, we are always win. You're going to fight, but you're going to win. You're going to fight, but you're going to win. It might take time, but you're going to win. <clears throat> and Abram just comes in. Hebrews says this is the type of Christ. Melchizedek is standing there. Abram comes full of worship. From his victory, he's like, yeah, this is awesome. Guys high-fiving each other on the camels. And he just comes right to uh, Melchizedek. And out of worship, he lays it at Melchizedek's feet. He puts it in his hand. Tithe. Come on. Tithe. First tithe in the whole Bible. Tithe. Let me tell you. Out of your blessing, don't forget God. You want to be a, you want to be a giver, a tither. Absolutely. Tithing, tithing. Jacob gives a tithe. Moses implements a tithe. Hebrews 6 and 7 says, the Levites were all giving really to Jesus. When you win something, when you come to church that week and you say, God, here it is. Here's my tithe. And you're putting it in the hands of Jesus. And Jesus himself is pronouncing blessing on you. Come on. Look at it right there. Blessed be Abraham who serves the most high God. It's awesome. Last thought, and then we're ending. Well, pretty much the last thought. Incredible. Okay, this one, uh, two thoughts. Seven minutes. We got seven? Seven, we got seven? Okay, seven. Two thoughts. <clears throat> uh, family problems. Chapter 16. 
I don't know about you. I've been married 37 years. To one wife at a time. Five kids. One at 12, but the revival broke out. <clears throat> now, blessing doesn't mean you're not going to have problems in the home. Because we're just humans. Abram, father of the faith. Now, this whole thing started. Abram, go. I will show. I will bless. Da, 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 da. Family, fill the earth, blah, blah, blah. Now he's like 85 years old. His wife, Sarah, is 75 in chapter 16. And Sarah gets a good idea. Let's help God out. Now, I'm not here to judge, really. I, I'm not here to judge. I'm not going to tell you 3,500 years ago that this is not, they shouldn't have done that. The law hasn't even been done yet. I don't know their culture. I don't know what's going on. I'm not going to go there. All I'm saying is she thinks she has a good idea. Good idea? What's that called? There's a medical term for, you know, putting the egg in another. What's that called? Yeah, yeah. In, in viral, in video. Yeah, yeah, that one. So she has the precursor to that. Take my maid, Hagar, sleep with her, impregnate her, and we'll get a son from her. Okay? So, uh, Abram says, all right, you're the boss. So, verse 3, so after Abram had been living for Canaan for 10 years, Sarah, his wife, took the maidservant, gave it to her, he slept with her, and she conceived. When she became pregnant, she began to despise her mistress. Now, we got some family dynamics going on here. Even though they go to church, there's some family dynamics going on. Finally, verse 5 said, <clears throat> Sarah said to Abram, you are responsible for the wrong I'm suffering. I put my servant in your arms, and now she knows she's pregnant, and she despises me. May God judge between you and me. And your servant says, <clears throat> Abram goes like, hey, like, hello. It was your idea. You do with her what you want. <clears throat> so, you know, we got a whole big fight going on here. And... Uh, <coughs> I think, we, I, think that, I think that this idea, here it is. You can be totally walking in the blessing of God and have a lot of bad stuff going on around you just from just stupid decisions. Stupid decisions. Stop blaming God for our stupid decisions. Like, suck it up. When you make a dumb decision and you have repercussion, that's life doesn't mean you're not going to be blessed. God's going to turn things. They had some pretty bad dynamics going on here. Now, the good thing is he got a son. How many of you know Abram loved Ishmael? Abram loved Ishmael. Love, 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 love. And uh, Ishmael would go on the donkey with Abram, travel around, everything, etc., etc. And for 11 more years, <clears throat> Ishmael's growing and Abram's whole vision of his whole future is pinned on this boy. This is the promise. This is this. This is this. Until he's 99. And then, guess what? We have another appearing. Be careful what you ask for. At 99, <clears throat> chapter 17, verse 1, Abram's 99 years old. God appears to him. That's good. He says, I'm the Lord God, walk blameless. That's good. Abram fell down. That's good. I'm going to make a covenant with you. Uh, that's good. You're going to become a father of nations. That's good. And then he gives them the covenant. Now, the covenant is a really tough covenant. It's called circumcision. To a 99-year-old man, that's not a good appearing. I can just imagine when he gets back to the camp, now he's got like 5,000 guys. Okay, everybody, church, church over here. I've got good news and I've got bad news. <laughs> Click, Barbara, go to the next one. <clears throat> go to the next one. 
The good news is we're going to have a baby again. We're going to have a, Sarah's going to have a baby. Good news. Awesome. One of the elders goes, uh, what's that bad news? Well, the bad news is God's got a new identification mark. Guys, over behind that tree. <laughs> now we're going to circumcise 5,000 guys. See, this is very, you know, there's five words I'm trying to think about at the same time. It's tough. It's tough. Let's just say it's tough. Okay, so they have a child at 90. Oh, and last, last point. Go ahead, Sarah. Barbara. Click. Click. They have a child at 99. <clears throat> they get an uh, Isaac. And uh, Abraham, oh, verse 18. Here's, here's what Abram says. He says, oh, God, let's just, uh, let's just cut our losses. Let's just put all of it on Ishmael, and let's just call it a day. Like, I like Ishmael. I've been 11 years on this thing. I love this boy. This is my boy. God says, you're going to have, no, I will bless Ishmael, but you're going to have another one. Do you know that you can actually believe the wrong vision for like a decade? Here's, here's what, I, here's what I, I've, I've wondered about this. People say, well, how did God let that happen? Here's, the, here's what I've come up with. Had nothing to do with God. Obviously, he never asked. Because if he would have asked, God would have told him, but he didn't ask. He assumed. You know what happens when you assume. You make a, uh, an assumption out of you and me. <clears throat> and the result of this last is the pain of division. Chapter 21, verse 8. As they grow together, the two visions, the two children, 21, verse 8, Sarah gets angry and says, get rid of that slave woman and her son. And I end with this. <clears throat> In life, there's so many factors going on. There's God, there's you, there's your wife, there's the elders, there's the children, the new children. It's really tough to keep a tribe together. It's tough to keep a leadership together. You go long enough, even though you're blessed, you're going to experience the pain of division. And Sarah says, get rid of that slave woman and her son. But it's Abram's son. And in church, the, I think the most painful things we face are divisions. For whatever reason, we don't have to point fingers. We don't have to name call. But we all face division. And finally, when you're 99 or 75 or 50 and you say... You know, you know, I, I am so done with this. I don't want to start again. I don't want to start with another. I don't even know this new kid. Isaac. My love's on Ishmael. I don't want to go to, the, I don't want to, go to a new church. I don't even want to go to church. I'm just going to sit home and drink beer. That's what guys say. Women say, I'm going to watch the movies. <clears throat> And so the pain of division knocks out people. But you know what? You got to keep going. You got to keep going. Because Ishmael got blessed and had 12 sons. Isaac got blessed and begat Jacob. And Jacob had 12 sons. And the, and the plan keeps moving on. The father of the faith experienced heartache. You will too, even though you're blessed. It's called life. And I end. I bought a book once. Go to the very end, Barbara, if you could. Uh, it's, uh, it's not the last slide, but the, almost the last slide. Just before the last slide. Don't show them the last slide, if you could. So I bought a book once, and uh, I never read the book. I lost the book. But it had a great title. So I bought the book again. But I move a lot and never read the book and I lost the book. So I bought the book for a third time. But that was when we're traveling even more and I never got a chance to read the book.
because of the title, and I lost the book. Two months ago, I bought it for the fourth time. <laughs> Same book, just for the title. I'll admit it, I haven't read it yet. <laughs> I hope it's at my house. <laughs> but I bought the book for the title, just for the title. I've never read it. I bought a book four times because of a title. That's it. Okay, Barbara, go to the last slide. Go slowly because they'll, right? Okay, there it is. Now, here it is. Go to the next one. Here it is. Go to the next one. There it is. There it is. The gift of the Jews. Watch it. How a tribe of desert nomads changed the way everyone thinks and feels. The way you think and the way you feel is because this tribe somehow formed and received messages from God. Your values, you're right, you're wrong, what you feel about the poor. A Hindu believes the poor are poor because of their karma and because of what they did in their past life. Therefore, they deserve to be poor. A Muslim says, whatever, Allah wills it. A Christian looks on the poor and has mercy because God says, remember the poor. You think differently because of this tribe. You got up this morning because of this tribe. He has affected the whole world. And I'm telling you, blessing works. It's alive. It's real. It's, it's moving the whole earth in a direction. And your, your assignment is to get into the, into the river of blessing, understand it, appropriate it, don't fall out because of discouragement, you know, cynicism, uh, uh, you know, <clears throat> illusion, disillusionment. Disillusionment is the child of illusion. You have to know what you believe on this thing and grab it. And I tell you what, church is where you find it. Church and community is where we work it out. We work out our stuff. And Abram died a good old age, and he was happy, and he had all his sons. He had his 12 sons of Ishmael. He had all, the, he had all of the, you know, Isaacs, and God blessed him. Amen, amen, amen. That's the fastest journey through Genesis that I've ever had, but it was awesome. Let's give it up again for Wesley. Amen. Praise the Lord. Let's stand together at this time. If you need to get your children, please go ahead and do that. I want to ask for the ministry team to come up. And, you know, I just want to change something. You know, the blessing of the ministry team here, get back to the word blessing, uh, isn't that you have to wait for a problem that you need prayer for. I think the number one problem is that we wait too long. And the number two problem is we need more healing in our emotions than we realize. Because, because all things can either be released or they can be uh, held back because of the wounds that you have in your soul realm. We've heard a lot about that over the last three days. We need to have that excellence of soul that uh, Katie Souza talked about. And so I just want to say today, this morning, come on up. Come up. Don't If you've never come up before, today make a decision. I'm going up. I don't care. I just want to get blessing. That's what the word was, wasn't it? Did you hear the word blessing today? Amen. And so they're here now as we go into this song. We're going to just let you come on up and just be able to receive. You don't need a problem. Don't feel embarrassed. You know, the embarrassment in a church is a lie of the enemy. It's going to hold you back from the opportunity that God's given you to get blessed. And so you got to set that stuff aside and say, I don't care what I think. I don't care what I look. I'm just going. I'm going because that's where the blessing is going to be. So, Father, we thank you now, God, that you are here for the purpose of blessing your people, Lord. We thank you that, Jesus, that you have obtained a blessing. And, Lord, you've conferred that blessing because the promises that were given to Abraham and now have been given to the Gentiles. And so, God, we appropriate the blessings more into our own being, into our own family lines, Lord, into our home, into our, uh, our, our jobs, our working situation. So, God, we thank you. We receive right now in Jesus' name. Amen. Let's just worship the Lord.
Let's give that up to the Lord. Praise you, Lord. We thank you that you are good. We thank you that you are good. Now, to take something to take away with you today. How many in here would say, listen to me, how many of you are Gentile in here? Put your hand up. Okay. Galatians said that because of Jesus Christ, the blessings and promises of Abraham have come upon the Gentiles. That is an unshakable, solid promise in the Word of God, confirmed, given, and confirmed by the Holy Spirit. So what does it mean? If you're a Gentile, it means you qualify. You qualify for the blessings of Abraham to come upon you. Can you say, I qualify? Say again, I qualify for the blessings of Abraham to come upon me, to come upon my family, to come upon my job, to come upon my finances, to come upon all you've given me, Lord. And so today, I go as a blessed man or a blessed woman. Can you say that? I go today as a blessed man or a blessed woman with the blessings of Abraham. Can I have an amen to that? Amen. You receive it? All right. God bless you as you go with the blessing of the Lord. Amen. You're never going to let, you're never going to let me down. You're never going to let, you're never going to let me down. You're never going to let, you're never going to let me down. Yeah.